Hey guys, welcome to Drawing with Abby. In today's video, we're going to be drawing Harley Quinn on Infinite Painter. Now, normally when I do these drawing videos, I spend most of the time adding some narration about the drawing itself and some of the techniques I'm using. In this video, I thought I'd break things up by talking a little bit about creative burnout and some of my experience with it. So, let's get at it. All right, this, to get started, I am recording off of my Samsung Ultra device. I'm using the time-lapse feature to capture this. I, uh, I hate it. I'm thinking I'm gonna have to switch to screen recording for the next one. Um, so here you can see I'm just starting off with blocking my shapes. With Infinite Painter, I tend to use the soft pen tool instead of the pencil tools. I just get a better feel of it. I grew up with uh, drawing with the soft round brush in Photoshop. So any brushes that gives me that feel I tend to favor that when it comes to sketching. So as you can tell, I did the quick blockings. I'm reworking my shapes right now. Um, just adding just a little bit more anatomy and um, adding uh, a little bit more form uh, to my initial sketch. And my drawing process, if you've seen my other videos, is pretty much the same. I go from big to more refined, to more refined, to more refined. It's, it's a lot more like sculpting it. I know I'm in the flow when drawing feels less like I'm building up layers on top of a drawing and more like I'm chipping away at a block of marble and I'm discovering the shapes and reinforcing those shapes as I go on. Which brings me to a tip. Um, I was lucky enough to go to a high school where they made you experiment with different uh, mediums. And one of the things I really enjoyed was sculpting. Um, so if you have the chance, uh, I suggest um, grabbing some Sculpty, pur purchasing some Sculpty, you can get it online or you can go to your local art store and just mess around with um, sculpting anatomy, uh, some shapes, and maybe even sculpting hands. And I find it personally a great way to understand these shapes in a way that uh, you might struggle with, with a pencil. So as I mentioned in the, in the intro, one of the things I, I really want to talk about in the video today is to discuss a little a little bit about creative burnout. And um, I know there's a lot of videos online and you see a lot of social posts that talk about creative burnout. And uh, I wanted to talk about it because my issue with creative burnout is that I definitely experience it, but I think that the, the source of creative burnout isn't really the fact that I just don't feel motivated to draw or that uh, I'm feeling monotonous in, in my creation. It's really just that feedback loop that introduces creative burnout. And what I mean by that is, um, and I'm trying to be honest here. So when I post something on Instagram or if I post a video on YouTube or post a short on TikTok, there is a little tiny uh, part of me that has a big influence that whether I care to admit it or not on how I feel about my artwork. And, th and that little tiny part is this secret hope that the next post I do, the next creation uh, I create, that's the one that's gonna, you know, go viral. It's gonna go big. And I, all of a sudden, a lot of people are gonna come flocking to my account, to my profile, discover my work. And then when I get that audience and, and get that, that feedback, um, opportunities will start knocking on my door. And I think a lot of people, uh, feel that way as well. I know we don't really talk about it too much. We try to keep saying that, you know, we're making art for art's sake, but there's always a part of us that's just creating um, and and posting in the hopes of being recognized and in the hopes of being uh, some praised for our, our creation and for our the hard work we, we put into our our drawings. And, and I think it's okay to admit that. Um, because at that point, you can start understanding your what your motivations are when it comes to creating uh, your artwork. And, and to me, that's what really leads to creative burnout or feeling a, a lack of motivation because I have so much expectations um, and so many hopes that I pin on these illustrations, whether I talk about it out loud or not, or if I admit it to myself or not that when you don't get that response, when, you know, you post something, you put a lot of work into and uh, you put it out there in the wild and, you know, the people aren't responding to it uh, or 
it's not really being discovered or doesn't really make the impact that that you hoped it would um then there's that creeping creative burnout at least in my case and then you start saying to yourself well was it worth it was it worth putting in that time and effort was it worth uh you know sweating about making sure the shoelaces here are in the right uh sort of shape and drooping correctly and and that's a and it's very hard to to walk away from those feelings or not to feel those feelings it's, and again especially if you put in a lot of work a lot of effort and just the the audience response isn't there um so then you just got to remind yourself that for every illustration that you do for every uh, piece of artwork that you sort of sweat over all of it is not only just the end result of the illustration but it is adding to your overall mosaic your overall uh uh build of your talent um because you learn from from each endeavor so if you do if you you create uh, a piece of artwork and you feel like you did a, a lot to you know make it really shine make it really polished you're really proud of um all the various different shapes and the intricate details that you put in and you post it out there and people just aren't there not really interested in your artwork then there's two two pathways you can take you can sort of um become really depressed about it and sort of but you know take a break from draw take a break from drawing and, and feel like it's not really worth it i've definitely done that myself um i'll be completely honest about that or you can start thinking about it constructively thinking about okay what is it that i'm doing that's not really responding to people and you can spend time, you know, critiquing your artwork um, and try to understand maybe there's something on a technical level that's just not done right. Or you can also start thinking in macro. And I know in, in a lot of cases for, for my artwork, it's really the content that I find is probably what people aren't responding to. Um, you know, there's only so much interest you can have looking at a piece of artwork of a a superhero character or an anime character video game character in a in a static pose and then you sound it's just like wow that's a cool drawing and then you just tune out and move on to the next drawing it doesn't really capture or hold your interest so one of the things i've been reflective on and, and trying to to think more about is adding more context adding um some hints of elements of backgrounds or are adding um a little bit of storytelling um in the illustration so this particular illustration we're looking at is a very poor example of that. I only realized that I sort of missed those elements after I finished the creation and it made me start thinking about um, um, these things. So for the next illustration, um, I'll be more aware of those things and try to um, try to imbue some of those lessons learned into the next illustration. So that's definitely the second approach. And I would also say that managing your expectations would be probably the biggest thing. Um, the biggest lesson to learn from that is that um, make sure that when you're creating your artwork and you're posting it out there, the expectation isn't that it's going to be this big, massive viral hit or it's going to be, you know, your signature piece. You don't really get to decide that, unfortunately. As a creator, what you get to decide is the illustration itself. You don't get to decide how the audience is going to react to it. The audience gets to decide that for themselves. So you have to learn to let go of that. And then just really think about what is it you're trying to achieve with your artwork and all the things you can do to 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 move towards that goal. So I'm myself I'm finding that um, these fan art illustrations are fun. They're really relaxing to do. Um, at a certain point, uh, once I get to the inking stage, I can sort of turn off my brain and just sort of enjoy the process. But really what I want to be doing and what I should be putting my efforts into is creating a comic book portfolio. So I've begun to start doing that myself and started to put in the time and energy and um, putting together uh, some layouts, um, done some rough thumbnails. And I'm going to be sharing that process in, in a later video. So yeah, so those were my thoughts on creative burnout. I know creative burnout is different for every person. It comes from a different place. The, the, the source of it is different for everyone. Um, but for me, it's that unrealistic expectation that I put on my artwork when I post it. 
and when i don't get you know that big response or that viral moment it's a great demotivator so the way i'm trying to combat that is to really focus in on what it is i'm truly trying to accomplish with my artwork and try to take on projects take on illustrations that that meet those goals rather than trying to meet a goal of uh, being internet famous or to to sort of get that online viewing that's that's really at the end of the day not gonna help me achieve my, my overall goals of being a storyteller so here's the final illustration uh i know we didn't talk too much about it on, on this video i thought i tried something a little different um but if you guys have any questions about the process that it did here uh feel free to drop a comment in the comment section below and i will do my best to, to answer those questions um again as i mentioned as i was talking about this illustration um this type of illustration i'm going to start trying to move away from and really focus on more storytelling or more dynamic illustrations um so i hope you guys enjoy some of those illustrations coming down the pipeline i hope you guys enjoyed this video i know it was a little bit different from what i normally do with my drawing videos so if you guys found it helpful please let me know or if you guys just really want me just to think about talking about the technical aspect of drawing then yeah let me know that as well if you guys like this video hit that like button if you want to see more hit that subscribe button and as always keep drawing <laughs>